Hey everyone, welcome to this color grading tutorial where we will be learning how to replace the sky colors using the HSL secondary in Prima Pro. After primary color correction, we use the HSL secondary to isolate and manipulate specific colors, not overall the image. For example, this can be especially useful when trying to change the color of the sky or a person's skin tones, or when trying to correct the ambient light sources. In Prima Pro, we have this footage. To replace the color of the sky, First of all, navigate to the window and scroll down to enable Lumetic color. We can also enable Lumetic scopes which is important for color correction. I have a separate tutorial about Lumetic scopes. I highly recommend watching that tutorial for better understanding of Lumetic scopes. You will get the link down below. Ok, let's move to the Lumetic color tab. Here you will find the HSL secondary. It has three eyedroppers, the first one for picking the target color. Then it has the plus and minus eyedroppers to add or remove the pixels from the selection. Now drag this eyedropper tool and click on the color in the clip, I mean the sky. After selecting a portion of the clip, it automatically adjusts the hue, saturation and lightness ranges to match the color of the selection. To view only the affected range, when you manipulate a color, select the checkbox next to the color or gray. You can also select from the drop down menu to choose between color or black or white or black. Here white is the isolated sky. If you want, you can invert it, but I turn it back in my case. Now use the plus eyedropper to add more pixels from the selected sky. And you can also use the minus eyedropper to remove the pixels from the selection if it needs. This time we use the HSL sliders to adjust and refine our selection. HSL stands for hue, saturation and lightness. To remove the entire range, simply click in the center of the slider and drag the slider to the desired position and see how they affected the image or video. To expand and restrict the range, use the triangle located at the top of the slider. Be sure to monitor the program monitor while making changes to absorb their impact. The bottom triangle on the slider helps to create a smoother transition between selected and non-selected pixels. Well, now use the sliders of the saturation and lightness to adjust and refine the selected colors and carefully observing the changes in the program monitor to ensure that the desired effect is achieved. At this stage, we have to fix this area too in an alternative way. So let's go to the refine and use the denoise slider to smooth the colors and remove any noise from the selection. To blend the selection seamlessly, adjust the blur slider to soften the edges of the mask. Now deselect the checkbox next to white or black. After defining the color, utilize the gradient tools located in the correction section to apply the targeted color correction to the selection. Now to replace the selected sky color, use the color wheel to set a color like sky blue and adjust the slider as desired. You notice that the color of the sky changes accordingly. If needed, you can reset the color to its default settings by double clicking on the color wheel and slider. By default, a mid-tone color wheel is displayed, but you can switch to a traditional three-way color wheel by clicking the icon located just above the wheel. At this moment, we can adjust the color of the shadows, move the color target point on the shadows wheel and adjust the corresponding slider. For mid-tone, select the desired color and adjust the slider to your preferred level of brightness. Similarly, for lightness, adjust the color wheel and slider to achieve the desired color for the selected sky. Once again select the checkbox and choose color or gray from the menu. This will display the edge of the selected color in the program monitor. Retake the plus eyedropper tool and pick these target pixels. And now you have to adjust the edge of the masked area. Use the blur slider to soften the edges of the marks to blend the selection. You can move the time indicator to check the progress and it has almost done. Let's change zoom level to 150% to maximize the program monitor. So we can see the edge of the marks area clearly which helps us to make it better. Let's readjust the denoise and the blur again to make it perfect. Great, on satisfy, change the zoom level to fit. To fine tune the color correction with precision, utilize the sliders below the color wheel. This slider provides the ability to adjust the crucial elements such as the temperature, tint, contrast, sharpen, and saturation, allowing you to customize the color correction to meet your specific needs and preference. We can create a desired look for the selected color by manipulating these settings. 
that's all for sky color replacement using the hsl secondary in premiere pro hsl is really useful for changing any color like the color of the sky or a person's skin tones i hope you really enjoy this basic color getting tutorial i'll catch you in the next video